is going on guys, DS Cuber here, and today I'm bringing you a puzzle unboxing, and I'm super excited for this one because these are some really cool puzzles that I wound up finding in a store. So, uh, last week I was on a business trip in North Carolina, and there was a mall that was near my hotel. And I wound up going through it, and I found a store that was selling all of these puzzles. Um, some of which I had, and some of which I didn't, so I picked up the ones that I didn't have. Uh, but this is probably my most valuable unboxing so far. This is $60 worth of puzzles. These two were uh, about 20, and these two were about 10, then plus sales tax came to about $60. So I'm really excited to break into these boxes, but I've got a whole bunch of Mefferts puzzles and one Rubik's product that I have been looking for for so long. This Rubik's Tower, I have not found online in a very long time. And I finally found it in a store. So, I mean, I picked one up because the Rubik's Tower is by far my favorite cuboid. So I'm going to be saving this one for last because I'm most excited for this one. So build up the anticipation. We're going to start off with some of these smaller puzzles. So this first one here is the mini gear egg. It's basically a keychain 3x3 gear cube shape mod. And I believe Tony Fisher is the one who designed this. But yeah, this is the gear egg and it turns just like a normal gear cube. And that is extremely stiff, but yeah, it's basically a gear cube in the shape of an egg. Uh, also, keychain form, so you could like snap this onto your backpack or something and carry it around with you when you go to like classes or on school or like if you're, you know, commuting, you know, it just goes on a backpack. It's a keychain cube. Uh, so yeah, this is basically the gear egg. It doesn't really corner cut. Uh, it's extremely stiff and I don't really expect much out of it because it is a uh, keychain puzzle. So no corner cutting, really stiff, could use a little bit of lubrication, but other than that, that's pretty much the gear egg. Next up here we have the mini Pyra Star or Pyra Star. Uh, this is a 2x2 two two shape modification with the corners replaced with the triangular tips of a Pyramix. Uh, yet again, another uh, Mefferts puzzle, and this shouldn't really be too difficult to solve because it's just a 2x2 two two shape mod. Uh, then again, there are a lot of really difficult shape mods, so I mean, who knows? Then maybe this is pretty difficult, but yeah, again, as with the gear egg, it's really stiff. It could use a little bit of lubrication. Uh, turning is extremely dry, and I there's no corner cutting on this thing. And I didn't think these would turn. These tips, they do not turn. So basically, your goal is to solve the 2x2 two two and make sure that every uh, four faces has like the, uh, the triangular pattern kind of like matched up to it. Next up here, we have the Skube Ultimate. And I actually have the mini Skube Ultimate, uh, which is like the keychain model of this. So um, I have this as a keychain. Uh, basically, it's a Skube shape mod. Uh, and they call it the Skeeb Ultimate. But what's really funny is when I purchased my keychain Skeeb Ultimate, it was advertised as just a regular Skeeb. So I'm sure that's just like a label misprint, but uh, either way, this is the Skeeb Ultimate. And doing some first turns, it is, again, as with the other puzzles, a little dry, but it turns fairly nicely, and Turning's rather controlled. It's a little dry, like I said. Uh, corner cuts pretty nicely, though. Um, more or less what's expected out of a full-size puzzle. I really don't expect these to have that great of performance, but uh, this isn't a super difficult cube. I've solved my mini cube ultimate uh, quite a few times, and it's quite a fun challenge because you have to like account for these centerpieces uh, being oriented differently. So. Uh, there is a slight parity issue with it, but regardless, out of all three Mefferts puzzles that I purchased, uh, this one definitely turns the best. So, this is the Mefferts Skew Ultimate, and now for the grand finale, the Rubik's Tower. I have been waiting to open this one for a very long time. And here we go the Rubik's Tower. This is by far the one puzzle that I've been waiting for so long to finally hold and use. I've never held one of these before. Even when I go to like a competition, people bring their collections with them. I've never seen this. So this is the first time ever holding a Rubik's Tower. And I'm so excited to do some first turns with this thing. So let's test out some of these top layers first. 
All right, a little dry. Um, kind of expect that though from a Rubik's product. Uh, let's test out these long layers. And okay, there is quite a bit of catching. Uh, probably with a little bit of breaking in, it'll get better, but wow, this thing is neat. And then of course the middle layer. Basically, it's like a Rubik's two x two with the top and bottom layers kind of like nested inside the two by two. So like this would be the two by two. And then these tops and bottom layers are kind of like anchored into here, if that kind of makes any sense. But that's basically how this mechanism works. And uh, there is quite a bit of catching when turning these long layers, but it's nothing that a little bit of lubricant can't fix. And I believe they have improved on their original design because I'm aware that one of the uh, major design flaws that this cube had was that it, uh, that it, uh, I believe like the catching would cause it to pop and oops, I believe I messed this up. So let's see if I could just fix this real quick. There we go. Easy fix. I by no means scrambled this thing though, but let's start with some shape shifting because, um, it does shape shift and look how insane this cube gets once it starts to shapeshift. Like, I'm just so stoked to try solving this thing and I'm gonna just quickly undo what I just did. Uh, wait, that's not undoing it, oops. Well, I think I scrambled this and um, the only way to solve it is to solve it like a two by two. So I will be right back. Okay, wasn't too difficult to fix from my slight scramble. Uh, then again, I also didn't scramble these top and bottom layers. But regardless, this isn't a super difficult cuboid, but it's a really neat one because it's like a small enough cuboid that it's not super complex to solve, but it also shape shifts. So this is just such a cool puzzle. I'm so glad that I was able to pick this thing up. It's only 20 bucks. I'm sure you could probably find it online, but it's a really, really cool puzzle, and I highly recommend purchasing this thing. So yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for watching this unboxing video. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more cubing content. And as always, keep on cubing, guys. See you in the next video.